Hey guys, welcome to another home lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can set up Gitty, which is kind of like you know, like your GitHub or your GitLab, um, but a pretty like smaller version. Kind of if you don't want like a huge footprint of you know all the extra features, you just want a Git repository to be used. Um, this is something that you could just easily set up with a Docker container and spin it up very quickly to host all your repositories that you need. So we'll show you how to install that and have some fun. So let's get started. All right, so what we'll do here is update our DNS for our new host that we're going to create. So we'll go to our DNS project in GitLab and update the serial number here and add the entry git t. Nope, don't tap complete. <laughs> in a, and we'll set it to be 83 here, not 983, 83. And we'll commit that change. So add Giddy. And that should be good. Next, what we need to do is because we're going to create the new VM via our uh, AWX, we want to make sure we add this into our inventory on our Ansible Playbooks project here. So let's make sure we add that Giddy. And we'll commit that. Add Giddy. And then we should be set from a repository standpoint of things that we would need to update. Now we'll go to our AWX dashboard um, from our AWX server and log in. And from here, we will run our create new VM and patch it, install Docker, create the certs and set up the proxy. So we'll launch template here. So the host name we'll have is Giddy. Uh, the new IP will be the IP that we had in the DNS entry, so 83. Our VM name, we'll just name it Dragon Giddy. And then our proxy address. So what we'll do here is go to Giddy Docker on the install, <coughs> install with Docker. Um, we can look through our the Docker Compose where port 3000 is probably going to be our best bet here. So we'll do HTTP localhost 3000. Um, and then we will all have upload headers true because you know you need to sync your data up. So we'll set that and we will launch that. So this whole workflow will essentially set up, create the VM on our VMware, patch it, install Docker, create the cert on our step CA server, and then copy it over and then set up the Nginx proxy to hit back um, to our docking container once we spin it up. So <clears throat> this takes about five minutes. So we'll fast forward this video once we get there. All right. Now that it has finished the whole pipeline, um, we can now go and actually log into our server. So we'll log in to giddy.dragon.local. And we can go through the process of setting up the Docker Compose file. So what we'll do here is copy the Docker Compose we will make a file, we'll name it docker-compose.yaml and then we'll just paste everything in here. So we got all these, um, it'll set the version. Um, if you want to, you can use latest, uh, that would make probably more sense here, but we'll leave everything else as default. The one thing to note is that if you want to use SSH for your Git repository, you'll have to redirect it to port 222 instead of just leaving out the default 20, uh, 22. So that's just one thing to know, but we'll save that. Um, and then we can cat our Etsy Nginx, nginx.conf file. So this is where we're doing the proxy. So you can see how the proxy pass is set to localhost 3000. Um, we got the client max body size and some proxy headers. So we should be all set here. So what we can do is docker compose up and detach. So it'll pull down the container and start running it. Um, all the data should be stored in the Giddy uh, directory in here because we set the volume in the docker compose. Um, and once this starts up, so it's up, we can now go to HTTPS kitty.dragon.local and we'll do the initial configuration. So 
Um, in this case, we're not going to have a database, um, like an actual database database. We'll have a file database, so SQLite. Um, if you wanted to, you could do MySQL Postgres, that's up to you. Um, but just for demoing purposes of just how to get started real quick, um, we're just going to use a SQLite. You can pretty much leave everything as default. You can enter the company name, um, but anything in slash data will be copied over for your volume stuff. So we want to leave those as is. Um, and then you got the port. So this, this you still want to leave as 2020, uh, not 2020, uh, 22, sorry, um, 22, um, because that's what the doc container is actually listing on. Um, but everything else you can just leave as default here. So we'll install a Giddy and this will only take a few seconds. It's not very big to, to install. So we'll give it a few seconds here. All right. That was pretty quick. So um, it'll prompt you with the login page. So we'll actually register an account. So the first account that you'll create will essentially be the account that will be the local admin. And we'll register for it. So you can see that it essentially uh, created my account and logged me in. So this is, I mean, kind of very similar to like your GitHub, GitLab repositories. Um, if you've ever used those before, it's pretty much almost the exact same except, you know, just GUI differences of where things are located. So you can see we got organizations repositories, so you can easily create your repositories. Um, and, you know, mark them as private, set templates, um, set default branch name. We can just leave everything as default here. Um, so you can see we can do HTTP or we can do SSH. Um, if you do SSH, the one thing to note is you'll probably need to specify the port in this. Um, so instead of it being just like this, it would be something that's like, um, probably something like this, like that, where it's a uh, port 222, 222 slash dragon. Um, so, but you can also just use HTTPS also in this case. So um, this, this will work if you just do a click click get clone of this. Um, you can also, you know, create and edit files in here. So like test file one. So like in GitLab, you could do this too. Oh, test file. I don't know why I was typing in GitLab. I commits and changes. So you can still do things in the GUI also. Um, so it's not necessarily just, you know, you, you need to download it locally. Um, but it's essentially your repository. You get your issues, pull requests, packages, projects, releases, wiki, activity, and you can see um, other activities. So if you're just looking for a lightweight um, Git repository, this is something that you can definitely use. So that's pretty much it for this video. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.